last categories of neurotransmitters that you guys are going to learn about are actually those that were discovered relatively recently. I realize 1992 doesn't seem recent to some of you guys because you were born then. But um, as far as as long as the exogenous chemical has been used, much longer than 1992. So this category are called um, the endocannabinoids. Um, and um, they include one called anandamide. There are more, but we're going to learn about anandamide. Um, they're lipid-soluble neurotransmitters, which is unusual. Um, they were only discovered in 1992. Anandamide was named from the Sanskrit word for bliss. Obviously, I don't speak Sanskrit, but I'm going to believe them when they write it down. The terminology used for this category is generally cannabinoid, because again, like we said before, what we learned long before 1992 was about cannabis. Um, and the receptors, um, the two that you're going to learn about are CB1 and CB2. Um, they behave differently. Um, they are really, really ubiquitous in the central nervous system. They're just all over the place, which is surprising because we didn't discover them for a very long time. They are also present elsewhere in the body, however, and we're still trying to learn about that. Functions of cannabinoids, endogenous and exogenous cannabinoids, um, they are involved in pain signaling, not pain sensation, but getting the pain in. They also, however, are involved in working memory and eating and sleeping patterns and in pleasure and food rewarding. But as far as we know, they do not tap into the dopamine pathway. So although um, people can repetitively use um, cannabinoids, uh, it is not with the same type of chemical dependent of the typical drugs of abuse like opioids and others. Um, so as far as the clinical connections look at, they don't look that similar until you realize that it's just a shape interaction with the receptor. Here is your endocannabinoid called an, um, anandamide and here's THC. Um, CBD is a little different. Um, uh, THC in marijuana is a weak cannabinoid agonist, but since there's so many receptors, it has a really strong effect. And of course, it can reduce, it ha can have an analgesic effect. And of course, now it's even legal here. Um, medical marijuana is legal here. Um, CBD um, is not thought to have intoxicating effects, but does, does have analgesic effects, not super dependably in every person, but in some people very effectively. Its mechanism of action is not very well understood yet. A lot more research is needed. Also, weak anandamide agonists are found in cocoa and chocolate, which might be why we find them so pleasurable. And although this definitely needs lots more research, anandamide in vivo, meaning not in a person, but in the lab, seems to inhibit the growth of breast cancer. Um, again, these two are little two minute videos that'll show you a little bit more about how those work. And then there's just a couple of other weird neurotransmitters. Nitric oxide, not nitrous, the giggle gas at the, gen at the dentist, but nitric is a neurotransmitter. We don't know too much about it. Carbon monoxide will kill you if you breathe it, but you also release it as a neurotransmitter. Who'd have thunk? <laughs>